Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Safe Cafe Number Six. I'm David Lassoff. I'm your host, and here with me tonight is Tim Coomber, our co-host, and we've got a lot of really cool stuff to talk about tonight. Um, hey, Tim, how are you doing tonight? I'm really, uh, really good. Had a refreshing week in Scotland. Uh, uh, when, when I saw my the the, uh, the the crew in Made Safe in Troon, which we'll mm -hmm. talk about later on. But yeah, it's been. Um, I'm really good tonight because I think there's a lot we can talk about and uh, big steps being taken forward. So you know we can cool. talk more about. Cool. Well. You know, I know we I know we want to talk about Network 99. I know we want to talk about uh, your trip up there and how all this plays into uh, into you know what I call the 99% revolution. I know others are are starting to. It's a you know it's a it's a bloodless revolution. It's the idea that we can through the technology of the safe network um, achieve things that heretofore we've never been able to do. And I know a lot of people are excited about this. Um, every every day I'm I'm reading and learning more. Uh, I just read David's uh, David Irvine's new uh, segment that he put out on his own blog, uh, explaining and very understandable, very understandable uh, 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 English. Let's say that um, some of the some of the uh, proof of ideas like proof of storage. What is uh, what is a hash? What is an encrypted hash? How do how, you know? These are words that we hear. For non-technologists, we may not know what what they mean. So it's very interesting to me that he started to put together a uh, series of of essays on his own blog, um, metaquestions.me, uh, to understand the technology. And it is understandable if you if you really try. You know, and I think everybody, everybody, even if you're not a technologist, you should at least begin to understand some some basic concepts. I want I want this to appeal. This uh, I, I know you do too, Tim. We want the Safe Cafe to appeal to everybody, not just the technologists. And uh, I know we're especially uh, wanting to reach out uh, to uh, to the uh, to the uh, Artists and, and, and these kinds of folks. So um, I don't have an for some reason tonight. The screen capture isn't working automatically, and I'm going to try to sort that out if I can. I'm going to try to turn this off if I can, and hopefully, hopefully we will be able to solve. <laughs> solve this. It was working. You know, if it's not one thing with these hangouts, I don't know what I don't know what it is. Let me try. Let me try this thing here and see if I can sort sort a few things out here. Um, doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be that. I don't know. Let's let's look at here. Screen share. Um, nope. Okay. Anyway, I'm just gonna go to you. I'm going to ma try to manually do this between the both of us and hopefully that will that will work. So you you got the big screen. Tell us about your tell us about your your trip up to see David and everybody. Okay. Um well, so for the first thing, they they're based in an absolute beautiful and I I repeat beautiful part of the world. I mean <laughs> it's, it's it's almost like me poetic that that what they're creating is being created in such a beautiful place. It was <laughs> it was very poetic for someone like me. Um, and the first thing that struck me now, I have to bear in mind that you know people I, I I've never come across this before. It was an agro business or an agri business. So this is a business where you're walking into where there's no leader. There's no you know, there's no company leader. So I walk, walking into the building was a very noticeable thing. Um, for someone like myself who's worked in companies before where you're walking and the first thing you met by a receptionist who then says, oh, I can lead you to X or Y and Z, you know. So walking in. And then into a, a game, which is a whole strange one for me, walking into a room full of coders. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> That's a very strange experience because it's 
it would be like the same as I'd imagine um, the, the everyday person walks in from a bank, walking into a art gallery with artists, with loads of artists all painting. It's very oh, okay, they've all got two screens. They're all <laughs> very um, very new world in that sense. But what was great about it, and this I think sums up the man who he is, David Owen. All the rest of the coders were all there with their two screens. David Irwin sat in the corner with his little laptop. He <laughs> <laughs> the laptop and he sat in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> which, yeah, I, which I think sums up the man completely, really, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's pretty. He seems pretty simple fellow in a lot of in in, uh, in his ways. I don't think he's simple in his uh, thinking at by any stretch. No, I mean, no. In, I mean. In, in, there was no big time Charlie about the man at all, you know. It was very, yeah. very because you got to bear in mind, it's it's his idea. I mean, that's the. Oh yeah. It's it's one of those. I mean, how many people take this idea and then just keep it to themselves? He gave the company away. He's giving it all away just because of the concept of what it is. So oh, yeah. That's that says a lot about a man, doesn't it? You know. Um, but yeah, they're very. The, the, the team are really good. I'll tell you the one thing that struck you, because Scotland's very, um, especially where they are, it's very quiet, quaint. It's where the golf is. That's where everybody knows it for. So it's kind of the old, very beaches. And but when you walk into their office, there was almost every nation of the world represented. And I thought, wow, isn't this the 99% revolution in action? This yeah. Is China, from India, from San Francisco, all, America, all parts of the world, all in this little building, and they're all there, all under the one concept that all, like, like, we've, like we've discussed in the second before. They're like bees, we're all there, and they're all there from around the world. And they're just all in the same thought process, and all creating the new, safe, free world, which. As me and David were talking about, this is the epoch moment of human history, because there's no turning back. There is no turning. And as David Irwin was saying to me, it's it's going to come from so many angles. And like I said, if it didn't come from Made Safe, it would come from someone else. This is sure. You know, and it's just really great that the people who have got it, the people who are here now, are people who understand freedom. Which is a lot of the talk. A lot of it was a really good discussion with Nick and Faze and Dave. We had a lot of freedom, and I think we were discussing. I think a lot of people. Fraser said it really well. He said, "With freedom comes good and bad." Do you know that? But it's a freedom that is essential. So walking into a made safe room when you had all these people that were understood fully. The comprehension of freedom, and equally what that meant, it was electrifying. I've got to say it was electrifying because it was surrounded by people that I said uh, I have spent maybe 20 years of my life waiting for, waiting for that moment. Almost like, wow, here we go. There's a group of people that we are. This is it. You know, this, yeah. this, this is the, this this is the future. We are at the edge of, of things right now. And what I realised, what was great about it was that we're all in this, there is no one, we're all in this right at the very edge. You know, whether it's David Irwin, whether it's Fraser, whether it's Viv, or any of the, the crew from Maidsafe, compared mm -hmm. to myself, we're, we are the, we, you know, this is the future, we are here now. There is, that was exciting about it, there is no kind of, oh, centralised, I am the man, this is all my idea, you follow my instruction, it was just all... Come on, we're all here, and, and what we're going to ex find and explore in this new world is going to be immense. Yeah, it's like you know, it's it's really every every day is you're in the middle of something that is looking back on it will be very very historical. Uh, the revolution is a real revolution. It's a it's a the idea that. Uh, Humankind, in order to uh, develop, has to has to, in a sense, reboot itself from its 
um, authoritarian structures. We have to find a way out of that. Uh, find a way to um, uh, move into a place where everybody is uh, uh, equally uh, taken care of, if you, if you will, and, and, and not exploited for the benefit of a few. And up until now, that's been the model, but it's not sustainable. And uh, eventually, you know, it starts to it starts to eat away at itself, and that's where we're at now. So, all we have to do is uh, use use technology to uh, give us that option. And I think that that's what it's about. It's not that technology saves us; it it just provides us a way out. Um, we'll have to save ourselves, and I think that you know it'll take people uh, here who understand that to um, to move into that. Um, I've been actually not to uh, you know not not to I don't know what the right word is, but I've been actually thinking about this quite a bit. You know, I've been through quite a quite an interesting um, week where I've I've thought about <clears throat> like on the one hand, you know, I don't I don't know if you were caught that or not, but uh, that Max Kaiser broadcast between the first part and the second part was over forty thousand views. That means that forty thousand people saw it, and who knows how many people they told about it or will tell about it. So I think you know a certain, uh, at least probably for the first time uh, in in the history of this project that kind of, you know, very quick publicity um, where, where uh, you know, tens of thousands of people uh, become exposed to it all at once. Um, I think that people, you know, we're at that point where people are going to start to find out about MadeSafe. So I got to thinking about this and I thought to myself, you know, uh, people that aren't really that keen on 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 what we're about, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we started to hear more static uh, from people who um, you know want to you know, and it's 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 inevitable, you know. So the people that pioneer the safe network, the people like us who are going to be develop developing apps and talking to people about using and farming on uh, on the network um, you know it, it takes it takes a little bit of uh, how should I say we say it in Israel chutzpah means nerve you know to go ahead and and uh, uh, you know you can, so in in South America in Mexico they call it cajones I guess in uh, in, in Europe they would call it brass or balls but you have to, you know, be willing to go forward in the face of people decide, you know, people saying things about you, you know, because we're not going to get through this this developmental period, I don't think, without uh, seeing people start to say, hey, uh, oh well, we know what happened with uh, with Bitcoin and Silk Road. Well, gee, th those guys over in MadeSafe. Uh, they're 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 creating a completely autonomous encrypted network. Wow, that's a, that's a paradise for cr criminals. And um, you know, I I I I don't really. Uh, I just know that criminal criminal activity and 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 bad stuff exists in the world. I just I just don't think that you know you can you can do anything to to stop. That kind of thing. Um, it's always been with us, but I think the thing about what we're up to is to give people an option, where they, you know, we, you know, on the grand scale of things. Uh, I'm not concerned about the thugs who want to sell dope or, or, you know, whatever their game is. Mm. I, I'm concerned about the, the 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 big powers that be, and and how they. Uh, traditionally and historically, 
have used their power to, uh, you know, oppress people. And so this is an, this this technology is so disruptive against that. And uh, Rich Beer, hi guys. Rich is on. Tim, are my questions coming through? Yes, I, I see just two things now, Rich. Hey, are you gonna, you guys, uh, Rich and Tim, are you guys, you guys gonna talk about? I, I thought maybe uh, that would be good if you guys could talk. I know you were gone this week, so maybe you can, Tim. Maybe you and Rich can uh, hook up and this yeah. week and talk about some things. Yeah, I mean, what just to touch on what you were just saying there, David. I think it's it's very it's apparent in the conversations I was having with everybody at Made Safe, and it was so. I think me is repeating that with freedom comes, like you said, the good and the bad. Now, I I honestly see logic and what this will raise because of the the whole thing. I, don't, I think a lot of people are the headlines is that the reason that a lot of people are saying about criminal activity goes on. Mm -hmm. Criminal activity in I mean, how much percentage of the criminal activity would, 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 would be classed as criminal activity is actually just free trade that's being barred by regulators? I mean, how, right. much, how much is Silk Road in, in actual essence? It's just people trading from one side to another. Okay, there's on the edges there'll be you know things that we would deem we'd all hate. We don't we don't, we don't want anybody to exploit human beings physically or anyway. But these, no. are, I think, over time. Through what what this may what may tech is going to offer and the, the safety network because these these things happen like like human slavery the people that people have actually put into I heard a story this week they found some you they found some bodies in a a trailer in one of the ports in England and I thought this is only happening because of authoritarian because of system because people want to escape because people have the power. And with what the safety network and, and the ability has, we we're not going to know the future because it's like saying to people 150 years ago. I keep using this example, but how can you say to anybody, "Oh, um, what the world will be like once we've got rid of slavery"? If you said to someone, you know, I said that last time we were talking, you know, 160 years ago, well, with the with death of slavery, it's going to mean what we live in today. A lot of questions were coming up about, oh, how are we going to? I was asked, how, how, how do you think the artists are going to make money in the future? How, 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 what is how questions get coming? And that's just a Well, the hows aren't important, aren't over important now. What's important is that we get the people into freedom. Do you know? It's just right. a what. We need to it's see right. What what can we do to get people over and free from slavery? What happens afterwards? I'm sure there's going to be issues. You're right. I'm sure there's going to be issues around certain problems. There's going to be issues around, like you said, criminals. But hey, it's it's a clear black and white choice. As, as we were, you know, as I was saying to David, you know, when we were talking to David earlier. It's between, and that's the reason he's doing it. It's between you either live in freedom. 100% freedom, with all its good and all its bad. I mean, like you say, freedom means we have the freedom to do whatever we want. And it means that some people, because like you say, humanity will do bad things. But what would we rather live in? No freedom? And it's no, no, we, no. In fact, in fact, that's that's precisely the point. If we we want to live in freedom, and with freedom, you know. You, you have the possibility of people doing good and bad things and I think we need to be, be grown up enough to accept that and um, and realize that the good that can happen with freedom will outweigh the bad uh, by so much and I was just curious though Tim you know I, I, I've, I've been a little curious about the guys up there because my my affection for them has uh, has grown in over the, over the time that I've gotten to, to know them, and uh, given given the fact that I I do believe that uh, people will take notice of what we're about. Do, do um, did you guys ha uh, 
I mean, could you just walk in there and there's like no, you know, n nobody, uh, nobody stopped you, no security, no nothing. Well, that that was that was the strange thing because I, <laughs> I kind of found their building by accident. I mean, it was a, I, 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 I I don't I don't use sat nav in the car. I never have done. So I just pulled into Troon, and yeah. we just we just we just parked up. And I went to turn the car around, and I was like, oh, and there's this kind of old build, yeah, kind of new build building that's hidden in the back of town. You know, mm -hmm. there's a little maid safe on the top of the, you know, the top of the door. Doors open, just yeah. walk straight in, and yeah, as we found, there was a, there was a kind of, uh, I suppose you, there was a kind of a front desk. But I just walked in and saw David, and ah, oh, and just walked straight over, and that was it. There was completely no centralisation, and everyone was just. Doing whatever they were doing, and that was the. I mean, we. I, I think I left about half seven at night, and there was no kind of like, oh well, everyone left at five o'clock. You know, people. David was still there when I left. <laughs> I think that um, sounds, from what I gather, almost you know, he, he works, he sleeps, he works, he sleeps, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> right, right, right. But no, I think I think he lives it pretty much. I don't think he. I don't think he has another. Because it's so important, though. Because this is this is why he's doing it. Because I mean, as he said to me, you know, I mean, like he was saying, he may take three months off after him, and I don't think anyone's going to begrudge when this is all running. He's going to be Are you there? He's five minutes gone. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Because if we don't do this, we don't get people, and we don't. That's, that's what you know. Me and you are about all the time. It's, it's getting people into this because right. what, how we build. These are the questions that will happen. But right now, it's getting people onto this and put it this way. David Irving said to me, and I, it was kind of made me happy. He said, "Can I sit to him?" Oh, you know, I was, I was explaining the same thing about walking to a business like it was. He said, "Oh yeah, we have people walking all the time. We have." You know, some really high college professors come up and they're really excited what we do because of the coding. Right through to locals, you know, people just walk in the street and say, oh, what are you doing in here? But he says, <laughs> he says almost like 90% or 99% of the people come in, he has to sort of, they say to him, oh, what is it? And you end up explaining it for like two hours, four hours. And they say, but I want the answer in a minute. And he says to me like, I can't give you the answer to what this is in a minute, because yeah. it's like to say to people in when we've all grown up in a like I don't know in a plantation in America, and one guy escaped the freedom and gone over and seen Europe and said, "Tell me about Europe in a in a, in a minute," and you're like, "I can't," because we, mm. we, we you, know, you don't even know what it's like to be in a minute, you know, and that's it's so refreshing because. In some ways, we, I, if, if, if David Owen can't explain this in, in, in less than two hours, then I shouldn't feel that I can do in less than two hours. But it's not important to. The important thing is to say, I said to everybody, don't, don't listen to me, don't listen to you even. Go and check it out. Read for yourself, you've got a brain. Go and check on the internet. Go and watch their videos. You know, you know that's an important point. Um, people should be willing to do their own homework. The documentation exists. I know that David's doing a, a, a series now, and I know I made mention of it, but uh, I, think, I think it is understandable. Uh, I, think, I think people like us do need to learn to be able to communicate what it is to people and help them to understand what we're trying to accomplish. You know, I think some of the things come down to asking people questions. You know, are you happy about your situation with privacy? Are you are you happy that everybody can get into your own business? You know, because if if it's if people aren't interested in having privacy, if that's really true, we got a, we got bigger problems than than I, than I realize. <laughs> because uh, I mean, if it's just a very small niche of people who are interested in in, in their own privacy, I think we have a problem there. Uh, again, it's, it has to do with security and freedom, the actual actual made safe mantra. If you tell people that, well, made safe is a reinvention of the internet, well, why do we need that? Well, are you, are you happy that 
you have to deal with people getting your information over the internet without your consent. Some people don't even think about it. I mean, especially the, the younger generation. I think I think our hands are full. Honestly, uh, the, I don't think I don't think the younger generation has the same expectation of privacy as, or you know, the desire to 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 to. I know they. Ha I know if you can if you tell them or you say to them. Uh, I guess you want to be able to do your own thing without other people telling you what to do, right? Every most people say, "Yeah." I say, "Well, you know, privacy is a part of that." You know, um, uh, everybody should be able to understand and appreciate what it means to be free. Either you have it, or you don't, or you're somewhere in between. So, you know, to me, it's like. Uh, uh, I've been around. I've seen. I, I remember the days when I was free, when I was young, before there were computers. Uh, computers took away our freedom. I think. I, I really. I, one of the reasons I'm. I'm really jazzed about MadeSafe is because, I think it's the technology that can return that freedom. You tell people, yeah, well, we're gonna uh, have our own uh, alternate economy, uh, using SafeCoin. And they'll go, what? What's that? I said, well. You know, uh, the idea that you can just have a transaction between you and another person, and that's your own business, and nobody nobody else needs to know about it. Um, I, you know, unfortunately, I think we do have to connect those dots for people. Why that that would be a, a valuable thing to do, not just you know. I mean, a criminal understands that right away. Goes, ooh, wow. You mean? Oh, I get it. Yeah, I can. I can be up to no good that way. But that isn't. That isn't the big picture. The big picture is, you know, for normal everyday people to be able to just do what they want to do without somebody else getting into their business. Uh, I don't. You know, again, it's it's challenging to understand it. How people may not immediately appreciate that feature of the network. You know, the idea that the network pays SafeCoin to an application for users to use an application. I mean, why does it do that? Well, it does that because the guys that invented it understood that if we created our own economy and uh, we would create value on the network, we would, we would uh, increase the the utility, we would increase the usage, and we would increase the strength of the network. You know, when if you want a, a, a billion machines hooked together, what are you going to do to incentivize that? Well, I think that's what SafeCoin's all about. It's the idea of helping people understand instead of, you know, being exploited by big corporations who are going to steal your data and then sell it back to you. Now think about that for a minute. David talked about that on the Max Kaiser show. The idea that the economic models of the Googles and Apples and um, Facebooks and Twitters of the world uh, are to, you know, their, their, their uh, economic model is based on something called to some degree, analytics, the idea of analyzing who the user is, what he wants, so that they can put ads in front of our eyeballs. So they've used us, right, to decide what to sell us, and then we just fall in line and buy the stuff. So we're spending our own resources, and it's like, it's like take, look at it this way. How many people today think nothing about wearing a Nike shirt or or some kind of a logo or you know Abercrombie and Finch you know th that that it's cool to wear um, these big huge companies logos and things and you're a walking advertisement for them for free you get nothing you pay them for the shirt to advertise their stuff for free now think about the madness of that. It's to me, it's 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 like people 
need to stop and really think about things. And to me, I think Made Safe and the Safe Network and having a, a altcoin intrinsically tied to that network is the antidote to that madness. Your thoughts? I, 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 I think you're absolutely correct, and I think what, what the, um, the, 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 the point is, is we're going to find, and I think we're going to find it a lot, is that I think a lot of people are going to be scared off by this, because I think, as I, we were talking about this when I was talking with the, They've been shown about this, and, and we kept mentioning the, the fact that you've got to bear in mind. And I can only speak of where I live, and I'm sh I know it's kind of similar in the most of the Western world. That we've had, I don't know, since I was born, we've been we've been all been as 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 humans conditioned to to bow our knees, to accept authority, to accept. I mean, how many times do you hear the argument? I've had this argument for <laughs> half my life, if not more. And I had it originally when I, I had it originally with God and religion, and then I had it then from the, from then I had it with all the people who were seconds. But it's like, oh, but if if um, if you know if you don't want that, then you don't want kids. To, you know, it's like saying I don't want um, I don't like state education. Oh, but I don't want my kids. You don't, you don't believe in your kids being taught. And what I'm trying to say is, is that a lot of people we've all been conditioned into this thing that we need big, powerful structure to run everything. And I think when people are now. It's like we were talking about with the main stuff crews. A lot of people are going to be scared by this because it, it is, as much as freedom is very appealing to people like me and you who uh, understand elements of freedom, there's a lot of people that are going to lose by the freedom model. And not you're right, Lee. The, the ones that are going to lose from this are the ones that are going to fight and the ones that are going to come to us hard. They're going to hit us hard because they are going to lose. But equally, they're dinosaurs, and they're going to fall off the, 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 the planet, and they're going to be eaten by bugs. So it doesn't really matter. But like you're saying, people, like you mentioned, the fact that it's almost they've been conditioned. They've been conditioned not to accept their privacy. They've been conditioned to just wear products without thinking. They've been conditioned. I mean, how many people know what money is? And it's just, it's just burning. It's like ashes. It burns in the hands. And they don't know that because we're not taught these things. And this is, like you were saying about why, why people wear Nike and what they're doing. And, um, that's why I think it's really crucial that we do it because I've got, if we don't, I mean, I will, I'll stand here to the day because I know if I, Nike will step in. And if I don't, Adidas will step in. And IBM will start stepping, and the powers that, that don't think like I do, and don't think like you do, don't like, think like all the, the people are made safe and all the people we know, they will step in, and it will just be the world we live in now. But the scary thing is, it won't just be with humans doing this. I is now, this is where we are now. We've got an artificial intelligence rising, and all they, all you need now is one human to control machines and. This what we're talking about, the free world and the free internet of the, the internet doesn't happen. They shut it off, becomes worse and worse and worse, and before we know it, we don't even we can't even have this conversation anymore. We we we're not even allowed to have this conversation because we've been vetted. We we're not allowed to talk with you. We're not allowed to talk over internet because we're you know, and and that's why I think that we live in the greatest days of our lives because this is the technology that's going to happen. So like I say, the ability for there's going to be no excuses for the human being because you can say, well, you can farm. All you've got to do is have a computer, farm. You can generate, and that in the first time, what we're living in now, this safe network, the made safe, the ability to generate through farming, as David was saying. It's going to scare a lot of people off, as much as it's going to attract a lot of people. But I'm sure if you went back 200 years ago, the, fr the idea of freedom to the slaves would have scared a lot of slaves off. And they would have gone, no, 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 I like to have my, you know. But what we know we're doing is right. Not because we, we're some noble, virtuous people. We know it's right because that's what human beings have always done. We've always, as David Irwin said to me, we've always fought for freedom, all of us. 
You know, I mean, I, I happen to live in Scotland, and Scotland's, as, as you know, everyone knows the Braveheart film. Everyone knows the the, the 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 urge for freedom. But I think the reason why we haven't got ultimate freedom as we have now is because every time we've been given the chance of freedom, people want to go nice to and say, "Oh yeah, yeah, you need this." You know, oh. and I, that's what I love about, as I said to David Irwin, I said to him, this has to be 100% autonomous. And I said, if you start putting a rule out where you say humans can become involved, I'm out of here. And he, he laughed at me and he said, yeah, uh, that's the whole point. It is completely decentralized. There is no, it's not 99% free and then controlled underneath by some people. This is 100% freedom. And these, these, these things are difficult to explain. You know, these, these concepts are hard for people to explain because they don't know what it is, and if they do think about it, if they're, afraid of, they're afraid of it. But yeah. so what we I have mean, to do is live our lives and show that this is it. You know, the best, way of, the best examples of freedom are people like you, are people like David Irwin, are the Maysafe crew, are hopefully myself, Rich over there. We're the, we're the examples of freedom. So it's imperative that we, who have understood that, we don't worry about, oh, what's it going to be in 20 years' time and big, deep philosophical questions. We used to get people to say to everybody, there's freedom over here. Come and join us. Because if you don't, <laughs> well, the world we're going to live in is not going to be a nice place. Yeah, I, I, I basically bring up these questions here, here tonight you know, when I talk about, when I kid, you know, I kind of kid with you a little bit that these guys, you know, they have, they, uh, they, they don't seem to be, uh, I mean, it doesn't seem to be any real concern about whether or not you can walk in there. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I've, I've been to war. I, I, I know a little, you know, people don't sometimes think about things in terms of good and evil, but I can tell you, I've seen evil, and it's ugly, and, uh, you know, I think that the powers uh, that work against freedom in this world, the ones that have a vested interest in preventing uh, preventing this project, I think there are. Uh, you know, I think you're. I think people are being naive, and I I would say that to, I would say that to David Irvine's face, or or Nick Nick Lambert's face, or anybody in that office, and you, and anybody watching this program, I think. We're we're naive if we think that somewhere along the line, somebody's not going to uh, take issue with what we're doing. I think they are. And so between now and when the thing is launched, uh, I I think uh, you know this is probably the most critical period of time, because once it is launched, it, it, there's nothing that you know it's just it's nothing can be done. Nothing can be done to stop it. Uh, short of uh, turning off the internet, if that is even if that is even technically feasible. Um, so uh, it's a very interesting time. This time of the test nets. This time we're getting ready to launch the beta. Um, certainly, uh, uh, I would be lying if I wasn't if I wasn't to tell you that I'm a little bit nervous. And I think that that's a good thing. That that that's realistic to understand that some people may not be pleased with us uh, presenting to the world an option that would give people really an opt-out, opt-in option. I think, uh, I think that that's uh, a, a very, very, very disruptive thing. And, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right, Tim. People may not know what to do with something that's totally free. But if we don't put it out there, I guess we'll never know. So I, you know, that's why one of the reasons I'm such a big advocate for it is that I think that it gives us the opportunity. The other thing I think that we need to need to really think about is is let's not underestimate the whole question of what it takes to help pe help people understand what it you know what it is or the what I would call the the adoption. Uh, concern. There, you know, it's just, it's it it is, it is uh, not. A, it's not a simple. Um, 
situation of you just build it and and they will come. I think some will, but how how fast will people adopt it? I think to some degree it depends on on the on the user experience and what that's like from the very beginning. But I believe that um, that if if the uh, if the launch of the actual network itself maybe not the beta but the you know whatever 1.0 is maybe out there in 2015 is a really a really good uh, user experience I think it'll spread spread sufficiently fast enough and uh, and it is what it, it's going to do whatever it's going to do it's just um, if anybody thinks that just because we build it, it's just going to automatically um, uh, be this great thing, I I beg to differ. I can remember the early days of the internet where you you know you just played around and did a few things, but that was about it for a while. And then you know there was this thing called CompuServe, and then there was that. Uh, I remember having America Online, and you know these kinds of things. Where you know you could do a few things, but um, it wasn't nearly what it is today. And well, the, the America Online one is a very good example because I lived in Argentina at the end of the nineties, and it's the same how 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 AOL did it over there, and I'm sure it's the same you know where you were. But they went round and they delivered everybody a CD. That you plugged into your, 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 your well, it wasn't your laptop, it was the big old, the old desktop ones. And that would be the, the, the down uh, their server. Now, I think it's a very, I, I've heard David mention this before, and I think it's one of the ones that's going to be a very, I think it's something maybe we could work with 99, you know, what we're doing with 99, because I think it's a very good idea. Maybe we could do the same. See this stuff, put it on CDs onto a little USB stick and give it to everywhere. Give it to kids in Africa. Give it to everybody you can meet. They can buy the network. I've before this thing. The key is to seed it to the world. It's like a lot of ideas. They could be great. And, you know, David Edwards mentioned Tesla. He's reading a book about Tesla at the moment. And it, Tesla's a perfect example. I mean, how many visionary things did he come up with? Inventions that, because of the powers around him, that we're very now discovering of like, oh, oh, how revolutionary were you? And that's why it's important, as well as I was saying, you know, when we're talking about, it, is to get out. And that's, I think, that's the most important thing we have to do. Is just, and I think that's a great thing we can do in Network Ninety Nine. We could find a way. One of the things I concerts I had this week was think, if we can find a USB stick that, or like I, I thought. Put a CD out, put some music on it, put some bands on it, and give that away with a CD that could be you know, then they could connect to the internet. And that's a great way of seeding out because you're going to get the people to to attract to the network. Because the more people that come, the more it will attract more. And I don't think it's going to be. That's why I, you, you're right, and I'm maybe more so than you. I think it's these are very very critical days. I mean, between now and the end of the year are the most critical times that we've got because. The more we can get it out to people before they come and hit us, because they will do. Like you said, they're going to come. They're going to come with all sorts of bad PR. We're going to see as great as the Matt Kaiser one happens. We're going to have all we're going to have the BBC. All these people come in and go, no, oh, no, 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 because we know they are because it's against their interest. They're the slave owners saying, well, we must have slavery because of this. And we must. No, we know they're going to come and hit us. So the most, like you say, the most crucial point is between now. Yeah, I've actually, I've actually, um, I've I've actually been thinking the last few days not to, you know, Andy Grove of Intel, uh, fame, the guy who invented, who you know turned Intel into what it is. Uh, he he was very famous for saying, for the saying, only the paranoid survive. And I kind of come from. I'm, I mean, I'm not a. I'm not. I'm not a. I don't want to sound negative because I'm not. 
I'm very positive about what what I'm doing and what we're doing, what David and the team are doing. I'm very very positive about it. Uh, but I think now between you know I had thoughts this week that maybe the best thing I could do now I, you know you could correct me if you, I mean I'm 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 not a I'm not somebody who isn't willing to you know to entertain contrary ideas but I actually thought this week that maybe the best thing I could do to help this project is shut up until it's actually you know like just you know encourage them to go <laughs> encourage them to go underground and stop talking about it and let them just focus on getting it done and getting it launched without any any you know crap you know and i mean i'm telling you i you know for the record i'd be i'd be very willing to just completely go away uh, and not, I, you know, I think about forty thousand hit, uh, forty thousand views on the Max Kaiser show, and I'm thinking about that. Well, somebody, somebody's going to find out about this that isn't going to like it. So we're still in that very critical period of time, and I, I don't want to sound, uh, you know, I don't know. What to, I definitely don't want to sound negative, but I do want to say, I agree with Andy Grove of Intel that there's there is value to paranoia and the idea that recognizing that some people wouldn't wouldn't be very happy about what we're up to is a very um, uh, you know just a normal thing to understand there are vested interests whose whose whole models of economy are going to get disrupted if we're successful think about that for a minute they're not going to take it lightly and if they have any way to stop that, I'm saying that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried. So, David, if you're listening, put some locks on the door for us. Would you do that at least? <laughs> Maybe hire a few, hire a few armed security guards, or you know, just realize that not everybody's not everybody's going to be real, really uh, happy. Uh, the closer we get to success. Hi, David Yaka, Yamanaka from New Mexico, and hi, Rich Beers. Um, Rich, are you from? Are you from? I thought I saw a picture of your Google. It looked like you were. There was a picture of the Castro District. I'm thinking maybe you're from San Francisco. Um, anyway, so Tim's from Tim's in, Tim's in London, and I'm here in, in uh, the startup nation, Israel. And uh, yeah, so I'm I'm sitting here thinking, Tim, tonight. I want to hear what you think about think about this, David, and Rich. You can chime in on this, uh, uh, or just text in what your thoughts on it. Uh, here I am. I'm a non-technical guy. I I have I have a I have put out a, uh, not. I mean, I think other people are thinking the same way, putting out. Great ideas about different applications. I know I go on madesafe.org. I read lots of things that people are writing about applications that they'd like to see. Um, uh, you know, Tim, what do we need to do? To, we have to we have to find uh, our the right people that will help get you know the what I call them what not I call is what developers call a minimal viable product the idea of putting up the uh, the basic the basic structure of network 99 where we'd have channels where artists would be able to upload channels where users would be able to listen and, and listen to and view music and independent films download whatever they wanted and the application would earn safe coin and artists would receive 99 percent of that revenue what do we have to do, Tim, to find those find those uh, those developers who want to get involved in this project right now? Well, I mean, when I was talking to the base station crew up there, they they just said to me, and that was almost everybody I sort of spoke to, was saying that, as you can imagine, I mean, going back to what you just saying, that for the next 
I think they, I, 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 I my, my vibe, and this is only my personal, what I picked up on, was it was almost kind of like, like teens, almost, they were almost putting too much pressure on themselves to get this over and done with quickly. Now, to be fair, David, I, I, I should just be with that. Now, take your time. I, I'd rather you spend the next four months getting this correctly. Because David Owens, <laughs> he's known as a big doing things and, and, and you know, test to the, to the full capacity. And I said to him, that's great, because I want you to, I don't, the worst thing we need now, what you're just saying, is that we, because we're, because, well, I don't know, maybe I, I come across like this, and I'm sure I do, and, and I know you're the same, but we're like kids in, at Christmas. And it's kind of, like, I want to go out and have it all now, and play, like I said last week, I want the guitar so I can go and jam away. But hey, as I said to David Owen, we need to have it completely correct. I want I want the guitar to work when it goes in, you know. I, I don't right. want to, and I think you're correct. I mean, I think they're aware of that they need to get this out and done properly, and I think it's they're aware of that because I, you know, it, it's it's going to happen. I I think maybe because it's, they're also aware that after what the Kai's report and stuff like that, they are going to become you know they are going to become more and more, so you know almost more and more known. But equally, right. but equally, we, 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 there was a great analogy that we were talking about when we, and I was talking to David about it. And they, they, in the back of their, like I said, it's a very little, just a basic little standard little uh, kind of old stoffers block. And they said when they moved in, there was an old tree. And it was like, kind of like dead, you know, it was almost dead on the floor. And they, they, they had this kind of mission set amongst themselves to sort of look after it. And now, a few years on, this thing is massive. This tree's huge. It's, it's taken over the backyard. And I thought it's a very good analogy for as much as we may fear or we may worry about X, Y, and Z coming towards us, it's nothing we need to fear about because what 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 and may say where we stand, it's going to pull these people away. You know, their power, it's, it's a bit like we were talking, and I was saying, you know, very obvious because when you sit in Scotland, they support the lands of as far as the Romans ever went. They never got beyond. <laughs> they never got beyond Scotland. That was that. They they got to that. No, no, no. They're not a too. They, they're too, too, too freedom, too, too rough and all. But the thing was, when the point when the Roman Empire collapsed from what it was. I mean, I live in Europe, and it the the empire was huge. It ran everywhere in Europe. A bit like the British Empire did. We we ruled everything, but it collapsed so quickly. Now, if you'd said to the people, "Oh, yeah, but the the, the Romans have got all these all these great technology, they've got all this power over us," but it fell away. So, as much as we may fear about they're going to come back to us, I don't really think so because with Bitcoin and other crypto currencies, these are just the leading elements of where we're eventually going, where we're eventually going to go. These people aren't going to have a leg to stand on because they only get away with doing it because they can, as David Owen said in the Kai's report, because the worst the worst sin of all humanity is printing money out of money. Mm -hmm. Taking that away, it, their whole, they're like a ghoul. It's like, it's like a ghost. You put the light on and they disappear. And then we're all scared of the, the authoritarians. Like, oh, they're gonna, I'm not afraid. I and mean, what they're going to do? What's the worst they can do to them? Put me in a cage. Well, go ahead. I've been, I've lived in, man, I lived in Venezuela <laughs> the year after when 9 11 happened. I'm the Chavez is the soldiers. Put me in a cage. I don't care. I don't care. I like this. It's coming. And it's important that it does happen. And, yes. and what, I, what, what I don't think. I don't know. Maybe, maybe ninety-nine percent of the people listening to this conversation now, he'd be willing to all the maids table. They, they realise what revolutionary concept that this is. It's complete freedom, and it's not oh, like Bitcoin was. Was a bit like oh, okay, well, there's some, you know, this still works in a centralised, open ledger form on an old crappy internet. He's just saying there's complete freedom on a new internet system. That's Oh, it's so revolutionary and so crucial. Of, of, of this. It's, it's like we're at a tipping point of life. And we know. I could, in 10 years' time, we're either not going to be talking and we're going to be some sad losers and we're going to be the, just remember the months our kids, 
Or oh, in 10 years' time, we're going to be looking back at these days and thinking, wow, well, we were lucky to live in these days where we could shape it. So as much as, like you say about cooling off, no, why should we cool off? Because we're shaping the world, my man. We, we, this is what we do. And even if we spend the next four months just sitting here every week, chatting away, expounding the, the, the things we're talking about, great. Because it's, we don't know. We, we do this in one seed is thrown. One seed is one, one, one person before we know it. You know. But I, I, it's, well, from, from my angle, because I've been away from it all, been in the mountains, no internet connection, just managing to get little bits. This this one week, it's been amazing. I think we, you know, what you started to say, say cafe, what two mo a month ago, two months ago, and look at where we are. Look at the people that have come. It's amazing. I mean, one yeah. week away, and it's been like, whoa. I mean, I've, we've had so much this week. I mean, some of the ideas that've been coming through to me and you from people out there about ideas how this can happen. Man, <laughs> it's exciting days. It's it, yeah, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Now you know, I, I don't think we're going anywhere. I think uh, we've we've sort of crossed that Rubicon, if you mm. will. You just uh, th speaking of the Roman Empire, uh, we, we're we're just we're just gonna keep going and uh, succeed, succeed or die trying. I guess that's about the, all there is to it. You know, I think it's really like that. Is is that you, if you decide to pioneer something, you have to be willing to take on the, you know, extreme levels of uncertainty that surround a project like this, and say, you know, if we're successful, the the, uh, the whatever it is we faced would be would be well worth it, and and to just you know look at it like that and say, hey. Um, you know, first of all, number one, I want to go on record. I've done it before, but I want to make sure everybody understands me. I absolutely believe that these guys are going to be David and Viv and Fraser and Nick and all these guys, uh, this team in Troon. I absolutely believe they're going to be successful and pull this off, and it's going to change everything. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really certain of that. I'm not. I mean, you know, I believe in that. Let's put it that way. Um, <clears throat> Rich, Rich writes in. He goes, "I want some direction on what the website n99.co should be about. I would like to have a more proficient site developer do the coding, but I am more than willing to put together a static site of information about the goals of Network 99." So, I think we should plan on. On hanging out, not in the safe cafe, but just those of us who want to uh, work on Network 99, getting together um, in our own private hangout and start talking about some of this. Does that sound good to you, Rich? Um, Tim, does that sound like a good idea? I think that that would be a, a great idea. So we should probably uh, communicate to each other and, and plan to do that. Uh, for those anyone else is listening you know network 99 will be when it's finally officially put together uh, an open value network and the guy, the ones who found it f and uh, build it uh, will be uh, rewarded uh, in safecoin and uh, but we're, but like you know the safe network itself I think network 99 is revolutionary. It's the idea of uh, giving the the artists their due, and and uh, and I think it, I think Network 99 operation is makes operational uh, in many ways. Uh, uh, Rich writes, ensure you set the time. Okay, we'll do that. Um, I'll send both of you an email and get you guys to both respond to that. So. Uh, Rich, I'm the only one who sees these questions. Nobody else does. If you can make sure that you text me an email, that would be good. Um, and and uh, and and I think, I honestly think, when you think about what's going, what is what is it, what it is going to take to help the network get a lot of tra traction fast is that 
things that are on the network needs need to be fun and interesting and you know really revolutionary and the idea of what I'm an, I'm an independent artist I can I can create my own art and distribute it myself and get paid you know for it like that the network will pay me wow you know it's like <laughs> it, it it's strange strange to me that it is a revolutionary concept because when you think about it thank you rich I got your email thank you um, it's strange to me that that should be a revolutionary concept I mean it's only honest it's only decent it's only right you know I know some of those words today seem to be out of fashion but you know I'm old school you know treat people right that's to me it's like wow what an opportunity when when I saw what this network could do um, to give people not just freedom but um, I mean, because freedom is hollow. If if you don't if 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 you don't give people a real option that they can opt out of, I mean, the authoritarians hold us hostage with, you know, we can't eat unless we follow their rules. I mean, that, that's what goes on with with their with their game that they play. Well, I think we need to turn that game around, and that's why that's why I'm, you know. That's why I think Network 99 is so important. It's not about, you know, uh, getting rich. It's about changing the game so that, you know, people can, not just people, not just, you know, and not just artists, by the way. I mean, if artists can do it, right, then they, they lead the way in that revolution. Well, that means that somebody can come around and develop a, uh, a shopkeeper's application, you know, like a guy who has whatever he's making. He wants to, maybe he makes like, uh, I don't know, furniture or tools or whatever his thing is that he does. You know, he could, he, you know, he can come on the Safe Network and sell his wares, and you know, to everybody all over the world. You know, and you know ship them wherever he wants them to go and uh, you know I'm just saying it's, 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 it's an amazing uh, it's going to be an amazing new world and, and I think that um, people are hungry for it I know artists I know artists are hungry for it right Tim? Yeah yeah I, 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 and I, not, I, not only I mean, I, I think why artists are, are uh, I, I think, are the first one for it. It's it something I said to Viv and Ben. Who was, who was from ben. Hey, did you talk, you talk to me? And, and I said to them, I said, it's kind of like, the, the people I, I, I mix with, and I'm, I mean, I'm sure Rich is exactly the same, it's kind of like, we're, I've got, we've got the army here, you know, the reason that the, 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 the people that are initially going to be attracted to this are going to be the musicians and the artists is because they're naturally people who want to express themselves and the inner, inner thoughts and feelings in their heads. And they're the ones who get, because, they, that, because that's what drives them. For myself, I, I, I write, I've, I've been in bands, I now paint. And my, my whole life is because I want to expand my freedom, what I am about, expressing my human potential. Now, when those people are always like that and they'll be attracted to this first because, A, they, they live their lives by that, and secondly, when they do go and live that world like that and they go out to the world out there, they go to a company or a gallery, I've seen this before, but then they, they those companies put demands on them and say, oh, I, I like your expression, but not what you're saying there. I don't like that because it's going to affect this. And, and before you know it, the, the person who goes into it with all the will in the world to be expressing themselves, it's been chips and chips and chips and chips and chips away, and uh, all the time all their money is going chips and chips. And, and before you know it, they're, they're left with nothing. And that's why the artists are going to practice it, because they're chips away. Now, 
Behind that, like you said, it's not just the admin artist, but the artist made the first to the, as I said last time, that the artist was the first to the printing press. But man, how many other people are going to benefit from this? You know? Oh, man. Everybody. I mean, I've, been everybody. I've been traveling around the mountains. And this is how, uh, this is why, mate, what we're doing is, isn't a whole new concept. It's basically, this is what human beings do. You know, in the, in the mountain communities where I've been traveling around Scotland, you know, person A makes a butter, person B has a hotel, person C has, and they all trade amongst each other. Now, <clears throat> I was mentioning, I lived in Venezuela, and we lived on the beach, and we had, it was almost what you would call the, the total free anarchistic society, because there was no rules or anything. Now, <laughs> every day, everybody, like the fisherman, he would go out, catch his fish, he wouldn't bring them all back and, you know, it was all, he would catch his fish, I would go out and do some mangoes, and, but everyone would, would share resources to their own benefit for them all. Not because there was some authoritarian person in charge, not because there's some great belief in some greater power, because this is what human beings do. Because mm -hmm. as much as we're taught, as you were saying earlier on about, you mentioned Silk Road and they're going to come back to us. These are the fear elements. These are the people who want to portray this thought process. Now, real human right. beings, you know, they do. You, look, man, you've been to war, and as much as you've seen the worst of humanity, what do you find in those situations? The best of humanity, no? I'd, sure, you yeah. Know? Found it too, yeah. And it's that good side of humanity that, well, basically, we'll have to win through, because if it doesn't win through, we're not going to be here. You know, that's how I, I think it's, and that's why I think the artists have, have always, through history, have always understood that because they've always suffered the most uh, authority. I, I, I have friends in Argentina, and they, you know, they had brothers and sisters and cousins who were just disappeared. And why? Because they were artists, because they were musicians, because they're the ones that, that any authoritarian wants to get rid of. So obviously. The first people who are going to be attracted to this are artists and musicians. Love this. This is what they want. But it's, it's hard to, like you say, it's not going to be a network full of musicians. This is going to be a network full of electricians, the great, <laughs> the, 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 the shoemaker, the, the, you know, any, the hairdresser. Because it's going to be like a fire. Once yeah. it's lit, it's going to hit everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And that's, yeah. It's it's just that I have, uh, I have a strong belief that artists who are willing to think uh, outside the box a lot a lot of times and, uh, you know, uh, uh, not willing to just kowtow to what authoritarians and totalitarians want them to to think want them want them want them to do uh, want them to uh, the authoritarians sometimes you know are trying to get the artists to uh, paint certain kinds of ways and write certain kinds of music but throughout history it's been the artist it's been the uh, musician the artist who has said I'm gonna paint my my way. I'm going to write music my way, and I think oftentimes it's art that leads the march towards freedom. So I'm very excited about Network 99 because it it is a way to for that to happen, uh, where the artist leads the way. And I, you know, it's just I think that that's maybe that's. Uh, you know, it sounds a little idealistic to some people, but I think that that's traditionally what has happened: is that artists think, give themselves permission to think differently, and therefore, naturally, are inclined towards leading the way um, and leading others into it. I just, you know, either by, you know, it, it's not always by some kind of a, a deliberate action. It's just, you know. Their, their music influences somebody, their, their art influences somebody, and somebody finds himself learning about uh, a new way of thinking, a new way of life. I think, for some, I think for some people, the idea of a place where they're free and 
they get to make up their own rules about how to how to do things is I mean I you know it's funny I lived on a beach one time too for almost a year uh, in Hawaii and I, li I lived in a tent and I can remember just living the life of you know really it, it was it was just so free you know mm -hmm. and you know people find ways to to uh, to do things and to eat and to work, you know, to, to make some money. Uh, it's um, if freedom is a freedom is a beautiful thing, and uh, we need more of it. And I think that that's what, to me, when I think about everything that this whole venture uh, of the Safe Network made safe. This whole thing, to me, what uh, what matters the most is my freedom that I intend to have, uh, and and I guess you know privacy and security are also very important to me. But I think about the freedom the most. Hey, I was going to ask you, Tim. You were up there. You talked to David. Who who were some of the other guys that you met while you were up at the, up at the office? I met Ben and Viv. Um, uh, very <laughs> Viv's a character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell tell us about Viv, because you know every, everybody knows about everybody knows about David. But tell tell us about Viv. Yeah, Viv's a, he's got a um, he's got a very what I liked about Viv was it's almost like that like, you kind of that he was the kind of person who. My impression of him was, was someone of like, there's not enough hours in the day. Do you know what I mean? He was very work, 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 work. When they all work, 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 but you could tell he was. I, I don't know. I mean, that was that was. I'm trying to say it was, it was the point I was trying to make when I was in the office. That you never have got this in You never have got people from 20 guys from all around the world in Troon 20 years ago. It wouldn't have happened. And it's and what, that's what's the amazing thing was that that's all happened because of Twitter, Facebook, which started off with MySpace and all, and you know, and that's in a in a world where the the internet is slow, where the internet is grinding to a halt. I mean, David Owen, uh, I, I was I was who told me it. He's mentioned to me that, that there was only six servers that do all the internet. That's it. Six. Really. Six servers that control that, that basically everything in the world in the internet goes through. Now, if that doesn't scare people to what to what to want to come and join to understand why safe is the most important thing for for the human history, six machines, six servers. That's it. And you think, ah, oh. but wow. In, in, in relation, that that was the point I was saying that that. That these the, these things have happened because of Twitter, and it was great that all these people there. And I th that's the great thing about I you know, point out about people like Vivis is that I think when you've come, I don't know, I, I've travelled the world, and I, I'm aware of this. I've never, I never, never, never claimed to say that I, you know, I am of that living places. Living places. I haven't just walked in and you know walked out. And when you do see. How can I say this? Pure, fundamental. What it's like to live in poverty, as in, like you say, like we've both lived on the beach, which is, you know, that's it. You're living <laughs> under canvas on sand, I and mean, it's not like you don't get, you know. Oh, you're lucky. You've got wood. You've got shack. You've got canvas. I've got ants in my tent every night. We use them. All the people from parts of the world where their freedom is more and more taken that's attracted them to this. That's that's all about Viv. I'm like, yeah, man, I've been to India. I know what it's like. You know, the, you understand like I do that as much as this will excite the Americans and it's going to excite the Canadians and maybe some of us over in Western Europe. Great. The people that is going to this is for and the people that are going to change the world are the one billion people in India. The one being in China and the rest of the world, 
who have never ever had this freedom and have never yeah, had this. You know, it's David Irwin was saying the same to me. He was like, one day in this, this is what his dream is. That one day someone will jump out of a bush in Africa and give us the cures of cancer. You know. You know, I, I was uh, I was reading somebody. You know, just to show you how Western the Western mind is, and I don't want to pick on this person, so I'm not going to really identify who it was, but I, I saw this person write something on the on madesafe.org today, and he wrote, what if they make it illegal? What if they make the safe network illegal? What do we do then? Kind of a, kind of a question. And it was like, it was like, all I wanted is I didn't I didn't respond to that. I don't I, I'm getting less than interested in responding to a lot of things I see on madesafe.org. But um the the idea is is like it's so anti it's so anti freedom to think that I need the authoritarian's permission for me to do what I want to do. It's like it's like I'm only going to do things that the authoritarians tell me I can do. Whereas, you know, I think it was Ayn Rand who said, uh, the question isn't whether or not you're going to give me permission. The question is what do you, whether or not you can stop me. And, and, so, and so I think the mindset for the pioneers of this network needs, needs to be, basically, I don't care what the authoritarians have to say. They can't, they can't stop me. Unless they stop me, unless they shoot me, unless they, you know, put me in, you know, they have to come get me, and you know, put a put a put chains on my arms, or put a bullet in my head, or gag me, you know, that's what that's the question. Can they gag me? Can they put a bullet in my head? Can they put handcuffs on my arms and 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 take me away? Because if we're going to sit around and wait. To wonder whether things are legal or not, Th this is not this is not that that kind of a technology. First of all, it's also very Western. This kind of a question, I could tell that the person who asked this question was probably from America. I could be wrong. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was from Europe. But either either way, it's Western in the thinking because you just said, "Who's going to change this world when this when this technology is unleashed? It's going to be the Two or two and a half, three billion people who've never had an opportunity to say, "I'm going to get myself free. I'm going to do what I." You know, they don't have a Western mentality that says, "Oh, I have to obey the authoritarians who have propagandized my mind to the point where I don't, I can't think anymore for myself. That I have to, I have to do what they tell me. That you know." So many people in the West think that rights are derived by what the government gets to say, give you. You know, the government gives you your rights. But I think I think that people who are pioneering made, uh, Project Safe, Safe Network Technology, and this space, this. Uh, Amazing crypto space called the Safe Network um, must be people who say, you know what, we're going to just do this. We're not stopping to ask anybody's permission. And yeah, it's going to it's going to disrupt people. I mean, it's going to disrupt the status quo. But Good. we're not sorry about that, no. are Good. we? <laughs> No, but so, I mean, my, my, answer to, my answer to that guy would be, whoever he is, was saying, well, you're born and you're going to die in this world. When you were born, is it who owns this world? You do. Not into rules. No, this, every, every rule that you've ever been told has been laid down by a generation, and then you think, well, who laid these people, who laid these rules down? I mean, rules have been laid down by people even if it was 10 years ago. How out of date are they? I don't care. Rules are just rules. You know, we're not born. You know, you've had a son. I've had a son. You know, when that when that's come out, when it, when, it, when you look at it for the first time, it's been born as well. It hasn't got any concept of rules. 
And you, and you as a parent, don't look at your, your, your boy or your girl and go, oh, right, from now on, then I'm going to condition you to learn a rule. No, you don't want to, because nobody, there is no rules. There's no, you know, that's the point. We're born free, and we're going to die. That's the two facts we know. The rest is contention. We know we're born free, and we die. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Maybe in time we won't die. We're going to be immortal beings. So I could be wrong on that part. But I know we're born free because nobody owns this planet. Nobody owns the morals. Nobody owns anything. We all decide. We can. I. You can decide what you want to do, and that's what you're saying about privacy. Because you've got a generation now, and I don't think it's even a generation. I think it's old people who just don't understand what privacy means. Hilarious. I'm from generally from a very secular, liberal part of the world. And the people who, the, the generations have been talking about, oh, you know, the left would be flying the flag for, oh, we must have, you know, gay rights because, you know, what a person does in their own houses are up to them. And the same people that tell us, oh, but we need to have people come around your house and, you know, make these and tell you what you to do. And, and the privacy element's gone. I mean, in, I, in, I live in, in this part of the world, in, in particularly in England. I mean, I'm in Leeds this weekend. And even now, I look at the window. Cameras everywhere looking at me. Some, you know, onto some server, sat there. And that's it. Who, whose rights is they have that you know, to steal my my privacy? I, who's whose right is this? Um, oh, as I make the joke, I say to a lot of people, did I miss the meeting? What meeting did I miss where they said, oh, by the way, we've got the right to steal your privacy and know everything you're doing? Just because we can. Well, who are you to tell me that? You see my picture, David. I have a picture of a tiger. It says, "No permission needed." Damn right, no permission needed. <laughs> well, you know, I think, I mean, you know, no offense, you know, I, I I'm, I like, I like things. I'm kind of a Anglophile. I like England. Um, I, I, I like. Uh, the you know the trappings of uh, what I would consider uh, what 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 defines uh, the English way of life, but you know you know in all fairness I think one of the reasons why uh, England's gone that way you know where this now becomes such a surveillance society you walk outside and you see cameras everywhere I think it I think. If I could be I could be wrong about this, but I I think I'm not. I think that England is like one of the top surveilled societies with cameras everywhere. There's more cameras in in England than than just about any other society. But but I think I think one of the reasons why that happened was because Eng English people are used to being subjects of the crown, and they they. You know, it's like in the it's in the blood a little bit that, you know, like the average English person, the average person in the UK, somewhere somewhere in their history they got it in you know generationally in their head that they're you know they're again subjects to the Queen uh, of England, and you know it's like you know the idea of somebody. And, uh, being a free person uh, in that environment, that's, it's almost, you know, it, it's almost looked as being, uh, and it is looked at, at being subversive. It's looked at being, uh, you know, thinking out, outside what, what is permissible. Now, I realize that, you know, in the last couple generations, there's been a lot of people that have become uh, anti-monarchy in England, for example, as they have in other places. But, but that's a rather recent phenomenon. Uh, the other reason I think that 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 people give in to stuff like that is that you were talking earlier about fear. Fear is really the driving thing that says, "Well, we have to do this because if we don't, the criminals will take advantage of us." And I think that's exactly the same kinds of arguments that will eventually be thrown at what we're doing. And so you guys that are creating something this free, it's too dangerous for the world. You know, <laughs> we just have to be prepared for that, and not, you know, not be surprised by it, and stick to our guns. 
because um, freedom is a is a is an experiment whose time has come, and it's the thing that I think that will, you know, really cause us to move forward again. I think we've been stuck for about oh I don't know. It depends how you wanted to look at it, but you know, in America they had great innovation uh, after 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 the war about 20 years, and then things started, you know, started to eat. They started to eat their own capital, as I call it. Everything started to, you know, off of that prosperity that was that was generated. And it's now coming to an end. You can't do it forever. You can't do it generation after generation before you've eaten up your capital and all you're left with is, you know, a shell of something. And I think that's what's happened to America. Um, it's it's turned into that by now. So I think the I think the development of what we're up to is urgent. I think we need to stay stay the course. I only presented those ideas tonight about the idea of security around. <laughs> Around actually uh, going this last leg through the test nets and the, and the beta launch because I do I do believe what Andy Grove said when he said only the paranoid survive I think you have to look a little bit over your shoulder and make it, keep doing what you're doing but be careful and uh, realize that uh, not everybody's going to like what you're up to if you're at, if you're really going to change the world. Uh, it's like Albert Einstein said, you're going to be opposed by a lot of mediocre minds. It's, it's just, the way that, just the way that life is. Um, we've got about three minutes. Tim, you got any final comments about your trip or anything you want to you uh, talk about? I'm going to give you the last, last few words. Um, I, was, uh, I would just want to put it on record because I know that this is out on, <laughs> out on record that I think me and you have, and you have said before that um, if David Levin was wrong about this, we were going to kick his ass. <laughs> we both said that. Well, I've, I've eyeballed the man. Eyeball to eyeball. And that's what's been the inspiring thing for me this week. Was because I think it's great that when we, me and you, we can talk over video and you can talk with people over email. But it's like life. We're all human beings. It's not until you see someone, you know, eyeball to eyeball, handshake to handshake, you actually think, wow, this is human beings. And, you know, human beings. Even, if it's, even now, if it's just, the people that watch this are partaking the best, you know, you're rich, David, yourself, myself, few people, isn't just a few of us in truth? That's 30, 40 great human minds. And I'll tell you what, like you said, like you just said, one human mind in Einstein change the world. 30 average minds, you've got a good chance. <laughs> Thanks. You know. Thanks, Tim. That was great. Yeah, I'm really glad you got a chance to do that. I hope you get, I hope you, hope you stop by again. And, uh, and, uh, cause you're so close and, uh, you know, stop in from time to time and let, let us know how they're doing. Well, I want to thank, go ahead. I was going to say, at some point in the future, we'll, um, We'll get some of the Made Safe crew on. They want you know. They yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. Um, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll have. Uh, I'm sure that opportunity will will develop for us in the right time. Anyway, I'll let everyone find a way. Um, I wanna I wanna thank my guest Tim Coomber. Uh, my my guest, my co-host Tim Coomber. Tonight we had a really great time. Uh, Rich Beer. And uh, David Yamanaka and Francis Brunel. I know you were on. I don't know who else was on tonight, but thanks for thanks for joining with us. And um, Rich, we're gonna we're gonna arrange for to sit down uh, or to do a private uh, 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 hangout about about the Network 99. So I'll be in touch with you. And I think. Uh, it was. It's been a fun time from the startup nation uh, in Israel. Thanks for sh showing up and hanging out with us in Safe Cafe Number Six. We'll let you know about the next broadcast as soon as we have that have that uh, scheduled. Okay. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. All right, Tim. Stay with me.